Today we we'll look at application development in Java. We can use the Java Swing or Java FX in developing applications with Java. So which one should we use? Java Swing is proven to be more stable because it's been in existence over a long period of time compared to Java FX. Java FX, however, has more consistent controls and we can use CSS styling in Java FX. Additionally, Java FX has built in animation and the applications that are developed using Java FX have more appealing look compared to the Java Swing. However, it's easier to customize the looks in Java Swing and Java FX, the APIs are also less consistent. So for this course, I'll introduce you to Java Swing and Java FX. Your course structure restricts me to Java Swing, though most software companies are shifting to Java FX. So we'll have a simple practical with Java Swing, and the rest of our practicals will be based on Java FX. This is the process we need to go through to install the Java Swing window builder to enable us to do drag and drop in developing our UIs. We'll go through this the practicals, so I'll skip it for now. This is also the process that we can use to install the Java FX in our Eclipse IDE. Again, because we'll go through this in practicals, I will skip it. Assuming we have installed our Java Swing application, we would need to create projects. This is the steps we need to take to do that. We would go through this in practicals, and for that purpose, again, I will skip. In Java Swing, we have two views, the code view or the source view, as well as the design view. We'll look at these in particles and what we can do. So we'll skip to event handling and how we will be able to add events in Java Swing. Graphical user interfaces are event-driven. That is, the interface will react based on the user interaction to indicate the task that the application for example, when you click the send button in an email application, you are simply interacting with the email application to send an information. So when a user is interacting with a graphical user interface, it generates what is referred to as an event. And the event is basically seen as a change in the state of an object. For example, clicking a button, closing a window, moving a mouse, typing in a text code, etc. These are events. So in developing our Java Swing applications, we need to add what they refer to as event handlers. And these are basically the codes we will write to perform a specific task depending on an event. And that is just a change in the state of an object. So when we are responding to this event, we are using what is referred to as event handling. And we know that we can have categories of events the event can be a foreground event or a background event. By foreground, it means we need direct interaction between the user and the application. And foreground simply means it's an interaction with the end user. So there are various ways we can add event handlers in Java Swing applications. We can simply right click on the component, select the add event handler, pick the type of event handler we want, and we write a code the tax when the event gets. We can also use a different option. We select the component, go to its properties, click to show the event icon, click the event of your choice, double click on the event, and write the codes to perform the tax when that event gets. Lastly, we can decide to go to the source and hard code the event handler, and we are good to go. Our protocols will design something simple as this. We will learn how we can create runnable jars from our Java Swing applications. We will go through this process. I will skip it for now. And we would also learn how we can create executables from our runnable jars. Again, I will not go through this process now since we go through it in the protocol. However, you should understand that you will never become the Java programmer you wish to be if you stick to only what I have told you. You 
need to be curious, create your own applications, make mistakes, and learn from our mistakes. In so doing, you would end up being the Java programmer you wish to be. So we'll go to the practicals and see what we can do.